Okay, so um, one of the things, I mean, I got to meet, um, okay, so this uh, video is on um, being able to witness all the ego me mechanisms and, and being able to see them all in clarity. However, there's not the experience of peace. Um, and um, so one of the tools I did, which I was taught by an enlightened teacher was the witnesser. So just to be the witnesser um, of whatever it is that I think I am, if I'm dualistic, go to the witnesser of that, which seems to be in dualism. Uh, and this tool, now the th thing to, to, you know, and I was also taught by uh, um, another teacher of enlightenment, uh, David Hawkins, of the letting go practice, which is not to label uh, and just allow what is to be. So, uh, and it was explained, uh, and I really, it was my, my experience, what he said was correct, which is that um, there are layers of sort of repressed, uh, you could call them feelings or energies that need to, to arise and be released. And that's just a process w which occurs. Um, and, it, you know, it's not like a thing that can be rushed, like, um, so the layer, like the, you know, it could be, even though this is using languaging, there could be, um, if you're witnessing the ego mechanisms so that you're not identifying with any of the separated thoughts or the separated identity, then, um, then that's great. But sometimes there can seem still not to seem to be that peace or that bliss or that ecstasy or uh, that that's there. So, uh, you know, I mean, if anything seems to be annoyed by that, one can go to the witnesser of that. There's two ways to dissolve it. You know, let's let's hypothetically say that a spiritual seeker is now in the witnesser and is fully able to witness the ego, uh, the thoughts that arise, uh, any sense of separated identification is all, also able to clearly witness that. But you know, there is still an awareness, and let's not say it's an identification, there is an awareness that there's no peace or, or love here. Or um, So then the thing is, I would e either, you know, if there's an annoyance that there's not peace or love here, then one could go to, that annoyance would be part of the uh, ego self, the separated self that's now annoyed. So you can just be the observer of that and let that collapse. Uh, so, um, and, just let it be it's like cooking spiritual cooking even though there's no peace here one is not identified with the separate self um if there is um but you can do uh, uh with observer work you can do more subtle thing is there something here that observes or witnesses the non-peace you know if something's aware that you know there's no love or peace here um one can just be if one is in the observer of that well that, you know just let it be it, it will eventually it will eventually dissolve away the, the dualistic thing of peace not being present because if you're not identifying with any mechanisms it's almost like there'll be an unlayering and it may take a bit of time but what's left to is more like a formless releasing of stuff you know there isn't anything like identifying as a separate itself but let's say there could be some for, formless energies which are dissolving away and, and may seem to take some time before they fully dissolve away. And say, if there was fear or something there or, or whatever energies were there, they'll just dissolve away, but you're not feeding the story or the ego identification. So that's one way of doing it. Sometimes there can be a miracle. You know, you, you might go, well, okay, there's, there's, just, there's just witnessing. There's no uh, duality or separation or identification. Uh, but it, some sixth sense seems to say, but it's not right. There's something not here. You know, could, the absence of peace and love, which is fair enough. But again, if you just let that go, it'll be uh, sometimes some things just need to shift and dissolve away. And then the peace and love gradually comes. But sometimes if you just go to the witnesser of that, uh, sometimes it can shift extremely fast. And suddenly there can be the... Um, intense presence of love and light. I mean, I had that as well when I met one of these teachers of enlightenment in Brixton. You know, I said, look, I, I do the observer and, um, but I'm just aware of a witnesser, um, but that's it, you know, 
and in a way it was more or less what what was being asked of me it's like yeah there's no where's the intense love and light um it just wasn't there it's was just witnessing it's, it's kind of like oh there must be one, one intuits there must be more than just this and he just asks well is there you know what's witnessing that and then you know the whole room disappeared in in, in infinite light so it was like something was still there that was creating a block to the um, to allowing. Anyway, it can happen quickly or slowly. Um, the other way, which I like to do, which is the letting go process, is okay. If I'm not in a dualistic, if I'm not identified with any ego mechanisms, any ego thoughts, and there's no sense of separation, it's like that one can be in oneness, but there's not the presence of peace and love, um, so or, or, or bliss or whatever. So then it's like, you know, it's, uh, there's an intuition, something's missing. Where's the, where's the love? So then um, the th I like doing the letting go, which is just recognizing that, okay, there isn't any at the moment, peace and love and joy, but, um, you know, there may be something that just needs to dissolve away. So just let whatever has come up and don't sort of have this dualistic attitude, like I want the love and peace now. You know, because that's going to create um, that's going to create a duality. So there's that way of doing it. You know, so sometimes how how that happens for me uh, is that sometimes you know one isn't in a state of infinite love and beingness and pure witnessing. You know, sometimes it isn't happening, but that's okay. I might go to the witnesser of that or just let it be without identifying with any thoughts or any story about it. And, and just trust that something needs to be released slowly. You know, the joy and peace are not here today. No, that, that, that's, that's okay. You don't have to identify and make a story about it because some of these things take time to unlayer out. Uh, but uh, the problem is if you identify, it's almost like you, you're creating a story that in time you want things now. And that would actually be a resistance to just allowing or to witnessing. You know, sometimes these things dissolve. So it's not... This idea of instant, you know, what's the magic trick to get into bliss and oneness right now? Um, I would let that go because it creates a kind of a resistance, you know, like it's okay if there is just no identification and, but not peace and love right now, that, that's okay. Uh, trust, I mean, you could, I could, you know, from a 12 step language, you could call that unconditional surrender make no story, make no thoughts, identify with no mechanism. And what is here is here. You know, don't, you don't have to pick up the ego and say, well, I want more, you know, just let it be. Because um, otherwise, if you pick up the ego and make a story like I want instant thing, or how am I not trusting absolutely so I can get the, the bliss and the experience, then uh, that also for me is like um, a block to letting it come, you know, let it come in divine timing, you know, there's divine trust, you know, it's okay. So it's, um, you know, this unconditionalness, even if one isn't in oneness and love is like, oh, you know, and then it allows the collapsing of the duality, you know, uh, of, and it does inversely. I mean, it's a bit like, uh, I think they call it um, a paradox. Sometimes when you let go of not being, yes, yeah, a paradox. So. You know, if when it when it's when one wants the peace and love and bliss and oneness right now, it's sometimes it's like a duality. So it's, there's something in the ego that wants it now. So sometimes when you go, it's okay if it's not here now, then it collapses the the ego mechanism that's demanding it be here now, um, and then it paradoxically it's more likely to occur. I hope that that's clear. Um, uh, I think I've said, um, yeah, so, um, I mean, trust on a simplistic level, you could say trust because there is a level of trust, which is nonverbal. Yeah, so there's a level of trust, which is nonverbal, not, not there's a me that needs to trust the divine, but it's the thing of allowing what is to be, you know, it's okay. You know, it's like, if uh, peace and love are not here, then don't label or make a story about it. Peace and love are not here. That's like radical trust. Maybe that's, that is it for now. You've got to understand context of, of where a spiritual seeker is in their journey, you see, and whether they're now picking up and they're reading things or they're getting mystical experiences, but then they're grumpy that they can't keep the mystery. I mean, it takes, 
you know, it's not, if you get your first glimpse of a mystical experience and then it vanishes, I mean, you usually find that over time, mystical experiences tend to stay longer and longer, and, but you get, you get episodes of ego, you know, that's just part of the course until you refined out um, most of the ego. And then the, the mystical experiences tend to be, seem to, may last for days or weeks or with an occasional sort of hiccup of duality, of fear and separation and judgment. Okay, I'm going to stop there.